Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Welcome to the Age of Empires 4 Farming Deep Dive. I've been watching a lot of wheat grow, and in this video, we'll get into the mechanics of how farming works in AoE 4, various practical questions around placing farms and farmer logic, as well as the impact of different techs and civilization bonuses. By the end, I hope you'll have a pretty complete picture and deeper appreciation for what's really going on behind the scenes to feed your armies. To start with the basics, a newly built farm begins with 120 out of 120 food. Now, initially, this seems odd for a couple of reasons. First of all, farms in AoE 4 give infinite food once they're placed, so why does it show a maximum amount at all? And why specifically 120 instead of, say, 100? It turns out the way it works is each farm is broken up into 12 sections, with 10 food each. While farming, a villager stands on one of those 12 plots and draws from the 10 food in that section, with a few different animations to show the food is being harvested. Once one of those sections is out of food, the farmer moves on to another one, and exactly 75 seconds later, the 10 food is restored. This is sort of a clever mechanic, as first of all, the villager is truly interacting with food on the farm in the most realistic way we've seen in Age of Empires, but the other advantage is that it's a self-correcting system. The faster a villager works, the more sections they cut, which then increases the rate that the farm is growing food back. After a bit of time, you can even roughly gauge the efficiency of a farmer based on how much of the wheat is cut. Now, villagers prefer to grab the closest available food to them, so on average they spend more of their time closer to the mill. Of course, as villagers are upgraded to work faster, they cut more sections, and on average they end up having to walk a bit farther to find unharvested wheat. This ends up having a lot of implications with especially certain types of techs. Also, a small side point is that while it looks like your villagers are taking frequent breaks, that's just an animation, and the food collection is continuous, even when they're standing still. So that's what's going on mechanically behind the scenes when farming. But now let's go through a couple of practical tips about placing farms and farmer logic. The first is just a quick beginner tip. After you have a mill placed down, if you have a group of villagers, you can hold shift and click on the mill, which will automatically place farms in optimal locations. You can move the mouse to different sides of the mill to make them more evenly spread out if you want a second layer of farms. After doing this though, you want to let go of shift and right click on the mill one last time with the villagers. If you don't do this, the villagers build the mill and then build every farm that you placed, even ones that they don't need. The game treats the farms as a list of buildings to make and goes through the full list before applying other villager logic. And the worst part is they build them in the order they were placed, so they can end up crisscrossing back and forth, making this incredibly inefficient. Instead, if you click one last time on the mill without shift, that clears all other instructions. Once the villagers build the mill, they automatically start trying to find food-related work, which leads to them building the farms and start working them right away. The villagers are a little inefficient with how they make the farms though, and do them one at a time as a big mob. Age of Empires 2 actually had a bit smarter villager logic here, where if you had farms placed down and clicked on the mill, once it was built, every villager would go to their own farm automatically. Another really important tip, especially for Age of Empires 2 players, is that unlike in that game, villagers don't automatically drop off whatever they're carrying when they build a farm. Here I have a bunch of gold miners carrying gold, but notice none of the gold is dropped off, and it's lost forever once they start collecting food. The exception is, again, if you're building a mill and right-click it after shift-queuing your farms. In that case, they will drop off whatever they're carrying. Now one nice feature in Age of Empires 4 is that once farms are actually built, if you tell all of your villagers to go work on one of them, they'll sort themselves out pretty efficiently with one villager for each farm. This, at least, is a convenient bit of villager logic, especially if you're raided or misclick your villagers away and have a ton of idle farmers. So now that we've talked about villager logic, how to place farms quickly, and why you always click the mill at the end, let's get into upgrades and how they impact farming collection rates. The test that I use for all of these numbers involves setting up the mill and farms ahead of time, then having villagers work on them for 5 minutes, after which I had the villagers drop off what they were carrying and found the average collection rate for each villager per minute. Depending on your setup and other factors, the numbers could change slightly, but this should give a general ballpark sense of the effect of different techs. To start with the baseline rate, around a mill, villagers gather just under 37 food per minute. This is slightly less than sheep that are right beside a town center, but honestly not that much worse. The main issue with farms and why you prioritize other food sources before farms isn't so much the gather rate as the large wood investment. Next, doubling up farms with a second layer has a negative impact on their work rate, as you'd expect. In this case, farms lose between 15 and 20% of their efficiency, though Wheelbarrow can offset that, and in fact, let's take a closer look at that tech. Age of Empires 2 players will know Wheelbarrow is an amazing farming technology, and Wheelbarrow in Age of Empires 4 is objectively better. 
Remember though, Age of Empires 4 does farming in a pretty different way, so how much does the extra carry capacity and faster movement really translate into? In this case, with nicely placed farms, Wheelbarrow added about 1% to the farmer's efficiency, so basically nothing. Of course, when you start to have doubled up farms, it helps quite a bit, and offsets about half of the penalty from the extra distance. The explanation is pretty obvious, and the fewer long trips to the mill that they have to make, the better. So how does all of that compare to the dedicated farming upgrade? Horticulture, for example, says it increases farming by 15%, but I found it turns out to be more like 10. As far as I can tell, it probably is adding 15 to their harvesting speed, but it's important to remember villagers don't spend 100% of their time directly collecting food. Trying it out on doubled up farms, it actually ends up giving a very similar benefit to Wheelbarrow of around an extra 10%. The takeaway is Horticulture is just a better farming tech than Wheelbarrow. Of course, Wheelbarrow helps other resources and villagers escape raids, and I'm not saying it's a bad tech, but just that it's not a great farming tech specifically. The second and third farming upgrades also seem to give something similar, of around a 10% boost to farms that are close to mills. The underperformance compared to the advertised 15% is probably a combination of a couple of things. First, I think they've done upgrades additively, so it's adding 15% of the base rate each time and not 15% of the new rate after techs you've picked up. The second factor is remember that as a villager collects faster, the farming mechanic starts to fight back by forcing the villager to then walk to more distant parts of the farm. Altogether, these things just end up muting the intended plus 15% bonus to more like plus 10% in practice. So that's the basic upgrades, but now let's get into the more interesting stuff and look at these civilization specific farming exceptions, and it turns out there's a lot of them. We'll start with the Chinese, who grow rice instead of wheat. If I've learned anything from RimWorld, it's that rice grows incredibly quickly, and that actually shows up in Age of Empires 4 as well. I initially assumed that rice would just be a reskin of the wheat grown by other civilizations, but that turns out to not be the case. Instead of the usual 12 sections to each farm, Chinese farms instead have 16, with each section holding 7.5 food instead of 10. In total, it's the same 120 food, but just cut up into smaller pieces. In addition to that, where wheat grows back in 75 seconds, rice grows back in 30. Intuitively, that actually sounds better, as rice closest to the mill will grow back sooner, so villagers should end up sticking closer to the mill and have a higher collection rate. But if you try it out with no upgrades, Chinese in fact collect slower than other civilizations. Now, none of this is mentioned in the tech tree, and I doubt it's intended, but the fact that they have to visit two spots in each trip as opposed to one is, in this case, a disadvantage. By default, villagers carry 10 resources, so instead of very efficient trips out to one part of the farm and back each time for other civilizations, Chinese instead have to make two stops, which I think accounts for the roughly 5% slower gather rate. In a bit of a twist though, after Wheelbarrow, they gather a little faster than other civilizations. Again, mechanically this makes sense, as they can then visit two locations to get 15 food, which is the same as other civilizations. In this case, now the faster growth rate of the rice means they end up hanging around a bit closer to the mill, giving a small passive boost. This is true right through to the Imperial Age, where I saw a small but consistent Chinese farming advantage. But now let's take a look at their granary, which is a dynasty-related building that advertises a 10% boost to farmers around it, and comes in the Yuan Dynasty, where your villagers already move 15% faster. Taking those numbers at face value, you might expect an extra 10%, or even more depending on the interpretation, but in reality I only saw about a 5% improvement. Watching for any amount of time, you can see why. The granary is a large building, and the villagers are forced to run to the middle of it, which is almost like adding an extra farm between them and the drop-off point. That design choice almost entirely negates the granary's collection rate advantage over the mill, though to be fair you can overlap up to 3 granaries for plus 30% farming rate, which does start to have a pretty significant effect. With all castle age upgrades, I found 40 Chinese farmers mixed in around 3 granaries could end up collecting around 53 food per minute each, assuming you can trust the in-game collection rate displayed, and makes them about 17% better than generic castle age villagers around a mill. I didn't play around with optimizing the granary placement though, so it's possible this could go even higher. Chinese though have yet another secret farming weapon, which is their tax collector, who can supervise a drop off building to increase what's dropped off by 20%. This seems to be a pretty simple mechanic, where the farmers aren't affected directly and it's just the food being dropped off is multiplied by 1.2. Overall, it feels like Chinese have a pretty complex relationship with farms, with slightly worse farms before upgrades offset by a potential boost from tax collectors and the granary. I like the attention to detail to make rice not just a reskin, but actually have a faster growing aspect, which then led to some interesting side effects. But now let's move on and take a look at the English. 
They don't just have cheaper farms, but their farmers also supposedly work 15, 20, 25, or 30% faster, depending on which age you're in. In practice though, as you probably expect at this point, you're getting quite a bit less than that. For example, in Imperial Age, when it should be plus 30%, I found it's more like 20%, or even a little under that. It's definitely helping with half to two thirds of what's advertised, but remember the harvesting rate is just one factor in the farming process. The bonus also doesn't boost the regrowth rate of the individual farming sections, so you'll notice English farmers spend a lot of time on the outer edges of the farm relative to other civilizations. That goes back again to the idea that the faster a villager works, the more the farm mechanic fights that with added inefficiency. Now, one natural question is to wonder how many farms can fit in the English mill's influence. The answer is more than 8, and in fact, you can get up to 12. The obvious follow-up question then is, if you're making 12 farms, is it best to have 8 perfectly efficient ones in the middle and add additional farms to the outside, or spread 12 farms in a slightly less efficient way overall, but gets them all into the influence? I checked both methods and found it's actually better to get as many in the influence zone as possible, though the difference is pretty small, and you can decide if that's worth your attention. Personally, when I'm playing the game, I don't have the free attention and time to do anything like this. In Imperial Age, the English also have their unique enclosures tech, which as a nice little detail adds an actual enclosure to your farms. In addition to food, you then get around 17 gold per minute for each ideally placed farm that's being worked. To give a sense of scale, with 30 farmers, that's over 500 gold per minute, adding a nice boost of infinite gold in the late game without requiring extra population. And finally, let's talk about the Holy Roman Empire. Their villagers not only carry 40% more resources as a civilization bonus, but they also have the unique unit, the Prelate. In Dark Age, without a Prelate, the Holy Roman Empire villagers are basically generic farmers. Just like Wheelbarrow, the extra carry capacity doesn't seem to do anything for well-placed farms, though remember there is a benefit if the farms are a bit further away. Adding in their unique Prelate unit to inspire nearby villagers, while it's technically improving their work rate by 40%, I saw more like 24% in my test. I found a similar result after Feudal Age upgrades as well, though one issue I ran into was that it was hard to get all 8 of the villagers inspired at once. It's possible there's a sweet spot where he can reach all 8 villagers, and in that case you could probably get a slightly better result. The Aachen Chapel landmark can also help with this, as a single prelate garrisoned inside inspires all villagers within a roughly 3 farm distance. That's enough range to inspire over 40 farmers at once, and with even a 25% work rate boost, that's essentially giving 10 free farmers worth of extra production, without having to worry about the associated population space. But that brings us to the end of the farming deep dive of Age of Empires 4. This ended up being a little more ambitious than I anticipated, though I'm sure there's still a few questions that I forgot to include. Hopefully though, this answered a lot of your farming related questions, and even answered some questions you didn't even know you had. Big thanks to Jean-Paul, Samantha, Brian, James, Kyle, Justin, I like toes at night, and everybody else on Patreon who pays me to watch plants grow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.